Good morning, everyone. Whoa. Woo. Good morning and welcome to Trolls Road Church. So glad that you've joined us this morning. If you're here in the building or if you're watching online, we're so glad that you have uh, chosen to make Trolls Road Church part of your morning and part of your worship week. Uh, I, uh, I'm so thankful for all the comments and all of the uh, suggestions and all of the ideas, but also the um, stories that I'm hearing as I talk to people. And, you know, these are difficult times because we can't gather, and it's nice just to see each other. But one of the things that happens when we see each other is we tell stories. And we're not, we're not able to tell those stories and share them quite as much. So we're doing our best to, when we hear good stories, pass them on and spread them around so that as a church family, we can be encouraging one another. But let me encourage you, if you have a good story of what God's doing or something that you've been praying about, maybe an answer to prayer or just anything that, that, that is you know, one of those church family type stories, feel free to share it with me, certainly, but, but make an effort to share it with one another. Well, one of the, the cool things that's, that's coming up is Christmas. I don't know if you're aware of this, but December comes after November this year, and so uh, we are preparing for the Advent season, and uh, we can't do some of the things that we've done in the past. And that's, that's disappointing, because we love some of the things that we've done in the past, but one of the new ideas that we are trying this year is taking our Christmas uh, dinner and uh, putting it on wheels. We are having a takeout Christmas dinner. So there will be the opportunity for you to sign up and get a nice, lovely Christmas dinner and take it home and enjoy it at home. But we also want you to be considering ways that you could use this Christmas dinner as an opportunity to connect with your neighbors or friends of yours in your building or, or others that you think might be encouraged by something uh, as simple as a, a fantastic Christmas dinner. Um, I, again, this is a unique season. And I think this year, the Advent season will present some incredible opportunities for us as Christians to uh, really love and serve those around us. So this is just one of the ideas. We want you to be thinking and praying about this because we do need you to sign up sooner than later. It's going to take a lot of preparation. It is the first weekend in December, the Saturday, and you can get all the information on our website and we'll be putting things out in our email blast and our Facebook book feed. Uh, I also want to encourage you, if you're following along on Facebook this morning, to uh, make comments as an act of worship, to, to feel free to contribute. If you're here in the building and you want to be part of that as well, if you're on your phone, I'm just going to assume you've got your Bible app or your Facebook open to be streaming the service. Uh, keep the volume down. There's a 10-second delay and, and the echo causes havoc. But there's also an opportunity for you to put comments in as things arise. You know, technology is is a blessing and a curse, isn't it? I mean, we, we were even saying this morning, we were struggling a little bit navigating some of the technology. But if you think about it, if, if this pandemic happened 20 years ago, the way we couldn't do what we're doing this morning. And so we're thankful to God for the opportunity to use something like technology to declare the gospel. And, and as I think about some of the things that, that technology offers us, uh, I don't want to steal this, Don, uh, but we have a guest speaker with us this morning, Don Miller from Tier Fund, and he's continuing our series in global perspective as Christians. He was telling me that because they're gathering on Zoom anyway, they are now meeting with international partners for their staff meeting. And so they met this past week with the team from Kenya. That, how incredible is that? Canada and Kenya. And they just had a staff meeting together. Uh, I'm part of a, a, a high school guys small group, and we use technology to not only connect for the meeting, but to have conversation throughout the week and stay in touch. There are some wonderful apps that you can use. There's an incredible Bible app that a lot of us at the church use. I, I would encourage you to be considering, if you have a phone and you use the internet, to be saying, God, how can I use this tool for your glory? How can I allow it to encourage me and bless me? One of the things I started doing a few months ago is I, I started getting a devotional email to me, a lectionary-style uh, devotional. And uh, it was interesting, in light of our series on global perspective, there were two passages that came in the last few days. The first was the parable of the talents, where uh, Jesus tells the story of a master who's going away, and he gives one servant five talents, one three ta two talents, and one one talent. And, and how the, the five-talent servant doubles it because he invests it and, and he works with it and he, he, he does what he's supposed to do. The two talents, he invests it and doubles it. The one talent, he hides it. He protects it. He makes sure he doesn't lose it, but when the master comes back, he's upset. 
because he wants us to invest. He wants us to take what, what we've been given and use it to bless other people. And so to whom much is given, much is expected. But in light of that story, I also got Psalm 121, which says, where does my help come from? I look to the mountains, the maker of heaven and earth. And so there is a wonderful opportunity for us to serve, to love, to use our effort, to invest well, but always remembering that our strength, our help, and all that we have to offer people comes from the Lord. So I'm glad you've joined us this morning as we celebrate God's goodness, and we are looking forward to worshiping together. I'm going to invite the worship team to lead us into God's presence.
words in that song. In everything, I hope we can all say that I believe that God is the way, the truth, and the life. And right now, we have the privilege of praying together for each other, for our own needs, and for even those that we don't even know. So let's prepare for this act of worship as the team sings, and we invite you to stand, to kneel, raise your hands, or simply bow your heads and just listen to what God has to say.
may be seated. I invite you to pray with me as we join together. Father God, we come today to worship you. That's why we're here. Some of us are here, some of us are at home, but our hearts are joining together to reach out to you. Father, we have so many reasons to be grateful, and our words seem lame. So to give you the glory that you deserve, uh, we're going to borrow some words from the psalmist this morning. How awesome are you, Lord, most high, above all gods. You are the great king over all the earth. Your word and your will are absolute, Lord Jesus. How awesome are your works on our behalf. So great is your power. You forgive our sins, and you give us strength and courage for each day as it comes. Great is your love and your faithfulness. You alone are worthy of our praise. Father, we thank you that in our humanity, when we missed the mark, you didn't leave us in your sin, but you came to us in Jesus Christ. He poured out his love on us to make it possible that we could be in right relationship with you. We're blessed beyond measure with your unfailing love and your goodness and your grace that never runs out. Father, we bring our imperfect selves to you this morning. We recognize that harboring sin in our hearts is a hindrance to our prayers. So we want to just pause at this moment to confess our wrongs, to repent, and to ask you to change our hearts. Pray, Father, that you would forgive us for the things that we did that we shouldn't have, and that you would forgive us for the things that we didn't do that we could have. We're undeserving of your goodness, yet you keep on loving and forgiving, and we're so grateful. We pray, Father, that you would cleanse our hearts and renew our minds. Lord, you invite us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. You know every concern of every person who's joining us in prayer this morning. And Lord, you also know that the pandemic that we deal with every day tops our lists. We admit that it's easy to despair, but Lord, we're reminded of Jehoshaphat in the Old Testament when he said, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Father, you are alone are the one who has the solution. You are the one that influences our decisions, the one who gives insight and skill to doctors and scientists. And Lord, you are the one that puts it in the hearts of people to love each other and to want to protect our neighbor. You are the only one who can bring healing and hope, so we humbly ask you, dear God, to intervene. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of partnering with Tear Fund as they fight poverty and provide disaster relief around the world. Father, would you minister to the broken and the hungry and the heartbroken, the hurting? Would you relieve their suffering? And Father, most of all, we ask that there would be ways that they could trust in you for their salvation as they understand the gospel. We're grateful for Don's ministry among us this morning. Uh, we ask that you would specifically bless the work of his hands. And Lord, as the shoeboxes come in in support of Samaritan's Purse, may they be a source of comfort and hope and joy to all of the little children who receive them. So in these moments, Lord God, we commit ourselves confidently into your hands, and we pray our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. It's great to be with you this morning, and thanks, John, for the invitation to share with you just a little bit of the work of Tear Fund and your partnership with us. And first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to those of you here at Charles Road who support the work and ministry of Tear Fund, and some of you are regular donors to our work, and so a huge thank you to you for your investment and involvement with us as we partner together to challenge, to tackle the challenges that uh, present themselves around the world. Of course, the other unique thing this morning in being a part of a free Methodist church 
is we have a unique partnership with the Free Methodist Church and the work that uh, we do together as we think about the ways that God works around the world. And if I can get my PowerPoint going here, we'll be good to go. <laughs> And uh, I just want to say a few uh, quick words about some of the work that we are doing together as a part of the Free Methodist Church. And uh, the unique thing that's happened in the last year is we've actually received three donations in the last year from the Bishop's Relief Fund. And the, first, uh, the most recent donation is for the Beirut disaster. Some of you will know that just uh, a few months ago we had this horrific explosion in the city of Beirut. And I was watching this week an individual who was walking through the streets and to see the devastation that that explosion caused. They say that almost every window in the city of Beirut was blown out. And if you can then imagine all of the things that are ramifications of that. And a Tier Fund Canada immediately responded to that explosion. And we are currently providing food for a thousand displaced families that were living close to the blast zone. And so you're partnering with us on that particular effort. We also this year have responded to the Venezuelan refugee crisis. And uh, many of you will know that there's 5,000 refugees that continue to flee out of Venezuela every day into Colombia. The economic devastation that's happening right now in Venezuela is horrific. So the average person living there cannot afford to live there. And so they're fleeing over into Colombia. And the church in Colombia is responding to that disaster. And we're so thankful that as Free Methodists, we've been able to be a part of that initiative to provide emergency food for the thousands upon thousands who are fleeing out of Venezuela into Colombia. And then also this year, we've responded uh, to the cyclone that came across parts of Malawi and Mozambique. And again, just a horrific situation. And you know, we're so fortunate to live here in Canada where something of a disaster happens and we've got the services and things that we can rely on in our government. And in those places, most people have nothing. And so they rely on emergency relief as it goes in to be a part of the response of what God is doing in their particular neighborhood. I also had the privilege this year in March, just before the pandemic took off, to take six free Methodists with me to Ethiopia. And you might recognize a couple of these individuals, a couple of people from the Harrowsmith Church, and some people from Brampton, and then Linda Sinclair from Arlington Woods. And we had the opportunity to go to uh, Ethiopia and observe firsthand the development work that we are doing there in Ethiopia. And it's such a privilege to be on the ground and to really hear the stories of how God is working. And, you know, we went to this uh, lady, we went out to her field, and we were seeing kind of the results of what she was doing from practicing conservation agriculture and the things that she had learned from us. And then she was just so excited about us that there was some commotion off in the back, and she was really saying to one of her grandsons, go and get that pumpkin that we grew. And so all of a sudden, out of the, the trail of the corn stalks comes this young lad carrying this huge pumpkin, and he hands it off to grandma, and uh, she wanted to show us the pumpkin that she had grown as a part of conservation agriculture, and uh, that thing was heavy. <laughs> but she was a strong grandma, and it was great to, to be with her and experience that. And, you know, the other thing that we practice a lot in Ethiopia and in most of the countries that we work in is also village savings groups. And so we sat with these savings groups, and we heard story after story of people whose lives had been transformed. And I just want to invite you, um, you know, when this pandemic is over, and there will be a day, um, if you ever want to go and experience firsthand what God is doing around the world, I'd love to take you with me and, and to show you. And I guarantee you, uh, one of the people that went on that trip with us, Carolyn, she, she said to me as we were experiencing life in Africa, she said to me these words. She said, Don, you lied to me. And I said, what do you mean, Carolyn? I lied to you. And she said, you told us before we went, we came here, that we would leave a small part of our heart in Africa. And she says, I want to tell you that I'm leaving my whole heart. And so it was kind of neat to hear that from Carolyn, but she could only tell me that because she was there and she was experiencing the, the things that we were experiencing together. Of course, as you look at our world and you think about our world, there have been many significant things that have happened in our world in the last 50 years. And, you know, as you kind of look at this map, you can think about some of those things that have happened in our world. And, you know, most of us remember where we were and what we were doing when 9-11 began to unfold, and, 
You know, how about that tsunami that coursed across Southeast Asia? And, you know, we, we remember where we were and what we were doing when we saw those horrific pictures. And, you know, there's been so many things that have happened in our world over the last 50 years. And many of you, you have been involved in addressing the challenges that our world has faced. And so we've seen some incredible changes and challenges. And as you've gotten involved to address those changes and challenges, your prayer has always been that you would see lives transformed. Your desire is to make the world a better place. And so even today, many of you, you embrace causes to that end so that the world would be a better place. In Leviticus chapter 25, we read about the 50th year and how it had great significance for the Israelites. And if you have some time this afternoon or sometime during the week, I'd invite you to dig into Leviticus chapter 25 because there's some great truths and great applications that surface out of that passage of Scripture. And I think a lot of the things that is written there in Leviticus 25 have direct application for God's church today. But according to the law, the 50th year was the year of jubilee. It was a year to take stock. It was a time for the restoration of a good way of living and to set people free from burden and inequality. It was about justice and freedom. And doesn't that just kind of sound a little bit of what our world needs today? Justice and freedom. And when we look back over 50 years, we see countless examples of how the church has been at work to address inequality and injustice. And so we've seen millions of people freed from spiritual and physical poverty through the work of our church partners. And I'm sure Trolls Road Church can tell the story of what you have seen as you have engaged with people both here in your community and around the world. Amazing stories of transformation. And many of you have been a part of that beautiful storytelling and writing. But the needs are still great. The needs are still great. Do you understand that? The needs in our world are still great. You don't have to look too far to see great injustice and unfairness and inequality as we realize the brokenness of this world that we live in. New methods and technological advances have come along, and yet there remains some great pain and sad realities. One that comes foremost in my mind today and almost every day is that there are just under a billion people in our world who are living in extreme poverty. And this morning we think about extreme poverty as living on less than $2.50 Canadian a day. There are probably some of you here this morning that spent $2.50 on your way to Trolls Road Church. We hardly even think about spending $2.50. And yet here's the sad reality of a billion people living in extreme poverty. And sadly, in the last year, because of the pandemic, more than 50 million people have fallen back into extreme poverty poverty. As I have been in some of those places of struggle, I can tell you this morning that it's real. Mothers and fathers facing heart-wrenching decisions about having to send their children to the city to fend for themselves at five, six, and seven years old. Can you even begin to imagine what that must be like? Families who find themselves living with dependency on others because they can see no other possible way of survival. And as you hear those things, 
and you begin to digest them this morning, do you say to yourself, there must be a better way? There must be a better way. Can the potential of people be unleashed in such a way that they live with the dignity of lifting themselves out of poverty? Communities not only surviving, but thriving. At Tier Fund Canada, we have been around for 50 years. This is our Jubilee year. It's a year of celebrating what God has done, but it's also a year of looking forward to what God will do. We will not stop what we are doing until poverty stops. Until mothers and fathers know the dignity of being able to provide food for their own children. Until farmers know the wonder of being able to grow enough food from their small plot of land to last for the whole year. Until the people that we serve become beacons of hope, following Jesus where the need is greatest. One of those countries where the need is greatest is the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is the continent's second largest country by area with a population of over 84 million people. Despite being full of natural resources, 87% of the people that live in this country are living below the poverty line. Poverty in the DRC is fueled by brokenness. Think of these sad realities. There has been 60 years of civil conflict in the DRC. We can't even get our minds around that. We live here in Canada. It's safe. We're not worrying about coming to church and all of a sudden the rebels jump out of the bush and attack us and stop us. And yet this is what these people live with all the time. Plant diseases that destroy their crops just when they're about to harvest. This is a country where the words Ebola and measles are a part of everyday conversation. We talk to some of our partners and they say to us, we'll ask them something like, are you scared of COVID? And they'll say, we're not scared of COVID, we're dealing with Ebola. And yet that's their sad reality of what they deal with all the time. This is a country where most people are paralyzed by fear and poverty is daily increasing. But broken countries and broken economies are not new to God. In Leviticus 25, Moses, God gave Moses a number of instructions that would help people address brokenness and inequality. The laws were specifically laid down in regards to how people would treat each other. God's intention was for the Israelites to live in a way that they had good, healthy, God-honoring relationships with God, with each other, and with God's creation. But alongside this beautiful picture of God's intent for people, Leviticus 25 also acknowledges the tendency of people to drift far from God's ideal. And I think most of us can go, yeah, we can see that. We can see that being true. We know how God wants us to live, and yet sometimes doesn't it just feel like it's so hard? And in Leviticus 25, specifically, we see three things addressed. As God intends for people to live in this way, there would still be those who would become poor. There would still be those who would be tempted to take advantage of other people. And there would still be those who find that they need to sell themselves into bonded labor just to get by. God wanted to establish a system 
that encourage justice to be right at the heart of community. And so the year of Jubilee was a time to evaluate. How are things going? Are there some things that we need to change? Is there some areas where we need to restore Israel and the Israelites back to the way and of life that God intended for them? And here's what I want to say to Trolls Road Church this morning. Just as God longed for the Israelites to live in a just and fair society, God longs for you and for I to live in a just and fair society. Jubilee reminds us that God's heart today is still for justice and liberation for everyone, for communities and nations to be restored to God. With 87% of the people living below the poverty line, the needs in the DRC are huge. But even in this place of great need, God's people are carrying the light of hope, and we are seeing some great stories of transformation. And I want to just show you one of those stories of how God is working in the lives of one individual. My name is Birungi. I am from a village in the rainforest of the Democratic Republic of Congo. God created this country full of potential, but after years of disease and rebel fighting, life is very hard for families. And it's especially hard for girls. My family has always been poor. When I was younger, I had to stay home on our farm to look after my little brother and sister. I wanted to care for them but I really wanted to go to school. I knew if I could get to school, I might be able to help my family out of poverty, but it was too expensive. Then my uncle heard about a tier fund training program and savings groups. It would provide me with training and skills to help me climb out of poverty. When I heard about it, I was so happy. I joined and immediately felt empowered. They told me that Jesus values everyone and that we are all equal in his sight. They taught me how Christ offers freedom. I learned how to save. With newfound skills, I started a dressmaking business. I saved the extra money I made to buy a piglet. I sold the adult pig and had money to buy a calf. I'm now saving for more calves. When I sell my cows, I will be able to buy my own land. Without Tear Fund's help and the local church, I would be at home without even enough food to live on. I would be suffering, but I thank God for this work and how Tear Fund's support set me free. One of the verses I came to learn and love comes from Romans 8 verses 14 to 16. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Abba, Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Burungi's life has been changed through the local church and is grateful for the skills she learned to lift herself out of poverty and help her family's farm. She just recently got married and continues to grow her dressmaking business. She tastes freedom and knows that she is a child of God. But 87% of people in the Democratic Republic of Congo still live in extreme poverty. Together, we can change this. Your help is needed to provide people like Burungi the skills they need to lift themselves out of poverty. Please join us. Isn't that a great story? And I hope that you were encouraged to hear of kind of the whole transformation of this lady's life. 
We, we never gave her anything other than training. And through the training, she was able to find her way out of poverty. Now, here, here, here's the interesting thing. Burungi lives in the northern part of the DR Congo, in an area so remote that it takes three modes of transportation to get to her village. First of all, you, you jump in a truck and you head down the road to where the road ends. The road ends at this river. And at the river, you, you have to get this boat across the river. And if you, if you could look really closely at that picture, on the other side of the river, you'll see some motorcycles waiting for their fares. And you'd jump on a motorcycle, and you would ride that motorcycle to the end of the road. And there you would get to Burungi's village. Now, many people would be put off by the arduous journey to that place. But thankfully, our Tear Fund partner, driven by the relentless love of Jesus, was willing to go to Burungi's village. And in this village, after a time of community assessment, our Tear Fund partner was able to establish a church and community transformation project. They had this sense of this is what is best needed for this village. And at the Church and Community Project, Burungi was able to uh, be a part of a skills workshop. And on the encouragement of her uncle, she stayed in that skills workshop. And that skills training put her on the road to a better future. Through participation in a village savings group, she was able to get continued training and a way to build up her savings. And soon, she could afford to buy better machinery and livestock. She was never given a handout or aid, but empowered with the training to build a strong and sustainable future for herself. Now, the beautiful thing is, is that others are now looking to Burungi as a role model. This young girl who's come out of the village, she's a role model to so many other young girls in that village, helping them to see the potential in people. Our partner is enabling people to discover that the answer to poverty lies within themselves, and in so doing, their dignity and self-worth is restored. Our partner often looks for the marginalized and excluded like Burungi. Burungi was the eldest child in her family, she came from a poor rural family, and she, like many other girls around her, was expected to stay home and look after her younger brother and sister. She was therefore never given the opportunity to go to school like the boys in her village. The plan for Burungi was to get married to an older man when she came of age, and then that would provide dowry and financial stability to her family. But when her dad died suddenly, she was trapped in looking after a crippled brother, and her future was bleak and uncertain. Thankfully, her uncle believed that there was so much more, and the Tear Fund Church and Community Transformation Project gave Burungi the chance to start rewriting her future. Through the training, she was able to find economic and financial stability. Burungi grew in her faith, and she spent, as she spent time with her teachers and church leaders, God's word says we are all equal, says Burungi. Burungi's eyes have been opened to her God-given potential inside of her, and she's using her gifts and skills and abilities to run a successful dress business. I think that's great that God is working in such a way in Burungi's life. She says that one of her favorite verses is this verse from Romans 8, where at the end of the verse it says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Burungi is now confident in her future and in her identity as a precious child of God. She has a purpose and a future. 
She no longer lives in poverty, driven by the social norms of her country and her community. She now has the ability to choose her own path and overcome the limitations put on so many young girls in the DRC. Hers is a story of redemption and restoration. And in our 50th year, it is these stories that we want to be a part of, and we also want to be a part of rewriting into our future. And that's why we're inviting you to be a part of continuing to be in these exciting stories. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus comes to the synagogue, and in the synagogue he reads the scroll of the prophet Isaiah from Isaiah 61, where it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he finishes by proclaiming, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Near the start of Jesus' ministry, he returns to Nazareth, where he has been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he goes to the synagogue, and he reads from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And in so doing, Jesus applies these verses to his ministry. Jesus was saying to his listeners that he had come to make Jubilee possible and that the year of the Lord's favor, a direct reference to Jubilee, was for all people. No longer was this simply an ancient law that the Israelites were unable to fulfill, but one for his audience and their neighbors too. Jesus was saying that his mission was God's mission. And that he longed for his disciples to follow his footsteps and to bring restoration and freedom and redemption and liberation to their communities. And in the DR Congo, Tirfan's church partners are doing just that. They're bringing good news to the poor and setting captives free. They are helping women like Burungi rewrite their futures that they no longer have to rely and live in poverty. They are enabling farmers to grow surplus yields that feed their families all year round. And churches are growing. The gospel is more than just saving souls, but it's about transforming lives. And the church has become the catalyst for change. And people are attracted to the church. And so as we know here this morning at Trolls Road, and if you're listening online, you know as well, that you and I are God's disciples. By restoring people to God, Jesus makes it possible for his disciples to live in a way that pursues the values of Jubilee. And so as the body of Christ called and commissioned to bear witness for the gospel, we are called to be a new community that marks the kingdom of God. And so God is calling us, his church, the church, forward to meet the needs of our world head on, to, be, to bring restoration where there is brokenness, and to be a channel of his relentless love in everything we do. And so he speaks these words of Isaiah 61 over us as church today. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on us because the Lord has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the prisoner and freedom from darkness for others, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Without Tirfan's intervention, Burungi would still be at home without even a future. But instead, Burungi is a successful businesswoman. She is viewed differently from those in her community. 
She now has options and a future and a plan for that future. However, poverty in the DRC is still rife. Our tier fund program officer, Norman, has been to the DRC numerous times, and he could tell you story after story of brokenness and injustice and inequality. And women in that country are particularly given very little opportunity. And farmers are struggling with feeding themselves and having enough food. And so today at Trolls Road, I want to be an inviter to you. I want to invite you to become a part of rewriting stories into the future. It takes all of us to show the relentless love of Jesus. The beautiful thing about our tier fund offering this year is that all gifts are automatically doubled because of our partnership with the Canadian Food Grains Bank. And so there's a wonderful opportunity as we give today to see significant impact of those gifts. The other significant impact today is for you to join us as monthly partners. It takes $28 a month to completely transform the lives of women like Burungi. After two years, she is set free to see great innovation, and she's broken out of that inequality that has been a hallmark of her life. And so today is your opportunity to join as disciples of Christ and to continue to think about how you can partner with us to see lives changed. Pastor John, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and to share a little of what God is doing around the world. For those of you that are in the, in the room with us this morning, um, at the back by the offering plate, we have, uh, we have these little, uh, little pamphlets and there's a, a, an envelope in there if you want to give directly to Tier Fund as well. If you want to give to these, these projects, if you want to support and partner with Tier Fund, you can make any kind of donation to Trolls Road Church just in the comments section on the check or if you use Tithely, just make sure it says Tier Fund and we'll make sure all that money goes directly. You know, as you were speaking, Don, it occurred to me that we've been all saying this is going to be a different Christmas this year. This will be a Christmas like no other. What if this was a Jubilee Christmas? What if we, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, said this, we always say we spend too much at Christmas, or we, we get carried away, and we, we, we laugh about it, we, we enjoy it, and there's nothing wrong with enjoying Christmas, but what if this was a Jubilee Christmas where we sat down as families and said, how can we partner with Tear Fund? How can we partner with some of our other friends, the, the Refuge and Gate 316? How, how can we make our Advent offering as a church family? Not just support people, but change lives in Jesus' name. So it, it starts here. Over the next several weeks, you're going to have lots of different opportunities to give financially and otherwise. I don't want you to pick and choose. I'd like you as a family, as individuals, to think about how can I make this Christmas, not about how I check everything off my, my to-do list or my giving list for presents to people. I, I want you to think about how can I be an agent of Jubilee? And I think that will make this one of the most profound and, and most blessed Christmases for you ever. And it starts this morning. Again, I uh, just would encourage you to, to check out tearfund.ca. There's great stories like Burundi's on that page and other creative ways that you can participate. I'd like to take a moment uh, as the worship team comes forward. I'm going to pray for Don. I'm going to pray for Tear Fund and pray for the people that will receive this support. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this morning for the ways in which you have uh, given us so much here in Canada. And at times, certainly we do struggle, but we forget that our struggle is different than struggles around the world. And so God, I, I hope this morning that as your spirit has been speaking, that, that these fellow children of God around the world have inspired us, that, that you have given us those five talents, those two talents, those one talents, as I talked about at the beginning in that parable Jesus told. And your desire is that we would invest that, that talent, that money, that ability, those resources for your glory, for your kingdom and to see lives change. Thank you for the opportunity we have this morning. Thank you for this season where we can truly remember that Christmas is based on you giving out of love to us, your son. 
And so can we give out of love to this world in your son's name? Thanks for Don and the work that he does along with his friends, his, his, his colleagues, his partners. Uh, I pray that their ministry would be wildly successful as your spirit goes before them. Pray you give them great wisdom and, and, uh, and the ability to, to make the decisions and use the resources that they're being entrusted with in, in powerful ways and that you would multiply it. God, the fishes and loaves that are provided to feed thousands. And Lord, I also pray for the churches in these areas as, as Tier Fund seeks to partner with local churches or set up local churches that, God, you would, you would bless those churches with your presence and that lives would be changed economically and spiritually, that freedom would be experienced in every imaginable way. We thank you for this time this morning celebrating these things and the amazing grace that you offer to each one. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God.
Well, thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, Don, thanks again for bringing the word, bringing those stories of hope. It, it, it's overwhelming. There is so much need in this world, but we have a, a, an incredible opportunity to partner with Jesus in these jubilee activities. I want to remind you that this week, if you're doing a shoebox, they should be coming in this week. I think it's Sandy, it's Wednesday, Thursday. You can drop them off at the church, and we do have boxes here at the church that you can pick up if you need that. As well, I want to remind you... Uh, especially our families. We have a trivia night tonight, and if you are interested in that, check online. You can send a message to Alyssa. She will get you the Zoom link for that as we just enjoy some time together as well. Last announcement, our Let's Do Lunch, which isn't this week, it's next week, but you got to sign up by this Thursday for our curbside pickup. There's lots going on, uh, but in the busyness, we certainly don't want to lose sight of what Jesus has called us to do. And uh, so I'm just excited about what's in front of us as frustrating and sometimes annoying as, as some of the things going on in this pandemic are. There is beautiful jubilee realities that are being ex expressed, and so we want to be a part of that at Trolls Road Church. Thank you for being part of our church. God bless you, and have a great week. Go in peace.